Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue listening to some more Helldivers 2 soundtrack. And why don't we just go straight to it? So if you missed some of your favorite songs, I already probably listened to them on last week's stream. And I think we listened to quite a substantial amount on last stream, 10 to 12 songs, I believe. And now we're going to continue listening to some more. The next one is called Reinforcement Music A and B. <clears throat> Yes, let's go straight to it. Here we go. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's democracy. This is some epic waiting music. You're waiting in a shed. You're waiting in a bus stop. You're waiting for your reinforcements. But you're doing it so in a very epic way. Yeah, that was very, very much epic. And why did I say it felt like waiting music or idle music? It is because it's staying in just one tonal center. Practically no chord progression, if at all. There were hints of passive chord progressions done by the higher voices. But the tonal center, a.k.a. the bass line, pretty much stayed in the same note, in the same key, all throughout. But yes, that was still an epic, epic idol music. And now we're going to wait. Uh, no, we're going to wait. <laughs> we're going to... Now we're going to check out Reinforcement Music B, which is... I would, I would say probably the sister song to the song that we just listened to. Also, by the way, chat, we have mods Parlnok and Talidar today. Please behave. 
These are my trusted friends and they are not afraid to ban you if you're naughty. And maybe later on, we'll also see moderator Hawk Six Phoenix. And yes, welcome everyone. We're continuing some more Helldivers 2 music. This is called Reinforcement Music B. Same tonal center as Reinforcement Music A with some subtle differences in the beginning. Same light motif, same melodic elements as the A version. That was, I feel like reinforcement music A and B is like the answer to a challenge. How can you make one chord interesting? And the answer is you add some interesting melodic counterpoints, some textures, and some really epic rhythmic drums, cinematic drums, and all of it. But as you can see, it's all staying in one chord all throughout the song. But it's still engaging, interesting to listen to because of all these added extra layers. And that's how you make one chord interesting. Whew. Hey, welcome in everyone. I'm glad some of you are waking up to see the stream for democracy, chat, for democracy. Self-concentrate, focus, we are looking on Helldivers 2 music, there's a proper way to suggest other music, and that is the Google suggestion form in the video description. But today, it's all about Helldivers 2. Terminid fight music. So, okay, the next pieces we're going to listen to are Terminid Fight Music, Bile Titan, Helldiver, Marching Cadence, Automaton, Fight Music, Boss Combat, Mission Success, and Credits Theme. I believe that's what we have for today. Yeah. There's a proper suggestion form and stream chat is not the way because these will all be buried after the stream. All right. Terminated fight music. Shh, shh, 
I have not played you yet. Please don't autoplay. All right, this is Terminid Fight Music. Terminid sounds like the name of a species, maybe one of the alien races. I don't play Helldivers 2 yet. I plan to play it. So please avoid any spoilers in chat just so I can experience it myself. If I don't plan to play any game, I will usually say it right away. So I wouldn't care about spoilers in that situation. Uh, extraction music, we already listened to it last stream. Oh, wait a minute. My flying V necklace came off. There you go, fixed. All right. Terminated combat theme. Epic dissonances, very Stravinskian. Electronic Stravinsky. Okay, from what little I know about the enemies of Helldivers 2, I know you're fighting bugs, insects, alien insects. So this definitely evokes giant cockroach. You know, like Men in Black 1, when Will Smith fights that final boss in the movie. Yeah, a whole army of that. This music fits that situation. Okay, I can feel two dichotomies here. Giant bugs, because the low horns and the low drums definitely feels like it's evoking a giant, a kaiju-like adversary, like Godzilla. But those violin tremolos, so they definitely evoke crawling, Chittering insects. So, giant cockroaches, chittering bugs. Yeah, definitely fits that description. Those accented bass, those accented drums and horn, th those accented bass, drums, and horn lines, dun, 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 dun. It's like arranged in a, so it's arranged, it's arranged in a very syncopated kind of random way, but I definitely feel or imagine like, a giant bug randomly stomping on enemies. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>
very, very nice. Sinister, high adrenaline pumping music. And also lots of imitating insect sounds like that electronic drums, like chittering bugs. And the strings, yeah, larger than life, cinematic, sinister, almost cartoonishly evil. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Mm. Terminated music is so chaotic. Feels very horror-y. I like that. Very Buffy the ba Vampire Slayer. Very the ba Vampire Slayer. Buffy the ba Vampire Slayer uh, description. All right. Hydration. Hydration time. Do you drink coffee or tea? Or do you drink liver tea? <laughs> this is called blue tide. Uh, sorry. Wrong. Again. This is called bile titan fight music. Bile. Something to do with acid. Or chemicals and Titan giant a giant insect fight let's see if that's the same imagery that the music will give me by the way I haven't played the game yet so I'm using my imagination a lot of you should use your imagination more <clears throat> instead of harassing a creator to just play the game. I don't have time to play all the games, man. <laughs> but imagination is priceless. Okay, so many imageries right now. If you hear that violins are doing some sort of... Imagine Flight of the Bumblebee, but 10 musicians playing Flight of... ten. Imagine 10 musicians playing Flight of the Bumblebee, but in 10 different keys. That's like what the string section is doing. Like evoking a swarm of insects, a mist or a smoke or a cloud that you thought it was cloud, but it's actually a swarm of bees or a swarm of death hornets or something like that. But yes, this definitely evokes boss fight, evil, sinister, giant, larger than life, but also lots of small, tiny details. Like, yeah, like the Terminate fight music, lots of imitating insect sounds. This is genius. Yeah. Again, Flight of the Bum Flight of the Bumblebee by Rimsky Korsakov is kind of like the quintessential making the instrument sound like an insect piece of all time, I would say in my opinion. And it's using a lot of chromatic scales or chromatic down steps or up steps. And chromatic is when you're playing a piano, it's Do and then the next black key, Do sharp or C or C sharp, that's a chromatic step. And if you play all that half steps in consecutive, that's like a chromatic scale. 
And that's pretty much what Flight of the Bumblebee is. So Flight of the Bumblebee, definitely going to be an inspiration for any composer or any musician wanting to make or emulate the sound of insects with a traditional instrument. This is like, wow. This is like if known neoclassical composer Rimsky, uh, sorry, again. This is going to be edited later. This is like if known neoclassic traditional, no, no, sorry, again. This is like if neoclassic slash modern classical composer Igor Stravinsky collaborated with Rimsky Korsakov, composer of Flight of the Bumblebee, and they were like, you know what? Let's make a space opera that will be too modern for our time. But this can sound like it was composed in Stravinsky's era because they were like advanced think they were advanced thinkers. Their music is what would their music, especially Stravinsky's music, is something that you would call ahead of his time. But now it's just kind of standard in modern film music. That, that was beautiful. Oh my God. It really takes me back from when I first heard about Stravinsky's music. Sorry, burp incoming. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, it definitely takes me back from when I first heard Stravinsky's music. And I was like, what is this? Why is there no melody that I can sing along to? For context, I was 11, <laughs> and uh, I grew up in a, in a musical household where classical music is normal to listen to every day. But then my dad, who is also a classical musician, one day decided, oh, it's time for you to learn about Igor Stravinsky. And I was shocked. What is this? This is, this is like you're just hammering on a piano with like with your own your full fist hammering on cluster of notes on a piano and pretty much making a full piece about that and it definitely grew on me it took its time but it grew on me and now i just you know it's normal for me to listen to dissonant tastefully dissonant compositions like stravinsky Helldiver Marching Cadence. The good thing about video game music, it's typically ta tailored to a specific emotion or scene. That's, that's nothing. You can, you, anyone can claim, oh, this scene is supposed to be frightening or 
emotional. Anyone can just say, oh yeah, this is an emotional scene. But if the composer cannot make it sound emotional, just the music, then it means nothing. The fact that I am getting the vibes with just the music, it, is, it says a lot about the composers and their skill and their imagination. The devs can just say anything. The devs can just say anything. Ah, uh, yeah, this, this part is frightening. Okay. But if the composer did not make a frightening sounding music, then it means nothing. It's just words. That is why I like listening without context because we are pretty much figuring out or experiencing the mind of the composer without any arbitrary labels like oh this is frightening this is set in 1960s so what anyone can say that but if it's not interpreted by just the music then it means nothing Yeah, that is a tangent, but that's always how I feel. What is not official? <laughs> Hi, Marco. Chat, follow Marco Meatball. He's an amazing musician, amazing musical analysis videos. No, I want context. <laughs> perfect. That is the perfect entrance. So this is not official. Then we'll skip that. <laughs> oh, it's fan-made AI content. Thank you for letting me know. I only like official ones. Otherwise, it's not really part of the game. Yeah, by the way, chat, Marco and I met during Game Sound Con uh, in, in LA last October. So yeah, <laughs> go follow Marco Meatball. Do it, do it now. I think he's been streaming, uh, what is that? I forgot, so, a, letter, a game started with a letter P. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chat. Uh, hair maintenance. Uh, pa Power World. I I have played Power World. Power World Pizza Tower. Yeah. Chat is going to name drop all video games that started the letter P now. All right. What's my taste in music? My taste in music is if it sounds good, I'll, mo I'll most likely listen to it. Doesn't matter the genre. But that's just par for the course of being a composer. I'm a composer, music producer, so it is kind of my job to be open to all styles and all genres of music. So my, my, my musical palette is super diverse, from heavy metal to classical, you name it. <clears throat> this is called Automaton Fight Music. I know some of you have also been waiting for this from last stream. Don't lie, you love horror music exclusively. Yes, you're very right. Only horror music and nothing else. <laughs> yes, chat, this is true. You, only should, you should only stick to one genre of music for life. <laughs> All right. Automaton fight music. 
automaton sounds like the robot component of the game. Exterminate. This is so intense, oh my god. Okay, initial thoughts. This is like, instead of John Williams, the, uh, George Lucas hired Igor Stravinsky instead to write the music for Star Wars. And this is his version of the Imperial March. Lots of heavy dissonances, bombastic chords, but still in a March-like sinister tone. That is one of the rare tuba solos in video game music, I would say. Structured chaos. This this is what it is.
damn it. There, there is no hope. A desperate last stand. You are about to face the most terrifying enemy ever in your life. You're about to throw your life away for democracy, for super earth. You don't know if you're going to win. It's a desperate last stand. But you're going to do it anyway. Because this music is so epic. You can't just not be so filled with energy and fighting spirit just by listening to this. But yes, I also read somewhere in chat that this is composed by Wilbert Roget. Damn, that is amazing. Wilbert Roget, I've met him several times. I was actually participating in a global game jam in Bethesda, and he was one of the judges. And I've also seen him and talked with him for a bit during conventions. So yeah, knowing that this is one of his compositions, I know that he contributed. I know that he contributed music for Helldivers too. So it's just icing to the cake. The music is twelve minutes long. I'm not sure if this is just looping, but we're gonna continue until the end, and I will just decide later during edit if I will. Trim some parts. my god did you hear that that's like let me rewind that for a bit that two seconds of that harmony two seconds that it felt and sounded a little bit hopeful. Like you have a chance to win. <laughs> Two seconds of hope, chat. Two seconds. <laughs> Everything else is desperation. Damn it. That was like our first true moment of respite, a true moment of relative silence. And then, boom, back to the noise, back to the fight. There is no hope.
I am just so in love with this transition to the half time reps. Do, 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 back, do, 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 back. Ah! I use that drum pattern a lot in my own arrangements, and it's just so cool to hear it being used so often. New element. Oh. That sounded like a combination of uh church organ, pipe organ, and a, a, a soprano operatic singer. It's beautiful. You know that phrase, I'm always at the edge of my seat. Like, you're always in just, you know, with just one signal or like something, you're about to launch into battle. You're, you're just this close to just, I don't know, punching the enemy or something like that. You're like that split second right before you take action. Well, this is the musical representation of that. <laughs> and hi, Wilbert Roget music is here. The composer is here. I was, I saw you earlier, but I was filming, so I didn't want to interrupt the recording until it, the song finished. But man, congratulations, Wilbert, on this wonderful, wonderful musical accomplishment. I will be disappointed if I see in a video game concert, they feature Helldivers 2 music and the brass section is not wearing the Helldivers suit. <laughs> Let me see. Fun fact. From Wilbert. The audio director and I were big Nine Inch Nail fans. So this 5-4 section was somewhat influenced by his sound from With Teeth especially the isometric layered rhythms in different time signatures. Now that you tell that, I can actually see it. I've listened to some Nine Inch, nine inch Nails as well. Big fan. So, yeah. That was interesting. That is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if you also post YouTube videos, Wilbert, but chat, follow Roget Music right there in chat. He is the composer of the music that we're listening to. The helmets will require some work to support the music. Ah, they can make something that they can cosplayers can make things work. They can make it work. Let me see. We got. Let's see how many more. We're not going to listen to the compilations because they're just compiled music, music of what we listened to already. Illuminate tracks are also leaks, so we're not going to listen to that as well because I don't want to get into trouble. Let's see. 
All right, this is just one minute long. This is called... Sorry. Hair maintenance. Automaton boss combat music with vocals. Oh, interesting. Very excited to hear this. Not even a countdown, you're just boom. Here's epic stuff. Definitely it's giving me red choir vibes. You know, that's so that uh that legendary all-male choir from Russia. That was beautiful. One thing I can notice with the automaton boss combat music, which is a full-on choir piece, and the Super Earth Anthem, which we already listened to last time, there's a very unusual take on anthems that uses a lot of descending chromatic cadences, which you don't really hear in normal anthems, because normal anthems like the real world anthems that we have are supposed to be simpler in melody in simpler in melody and harmony so it's most of the time just tonic and dominant you know you know the normal pop music chord progressions and the reason for that is it's because national anthems are supposed to be able to be well able to be so how many times have i said able National anthems are supposed to be simple to sing and to perform by everyone, even those who are not musicians, because it's supposed to be an anthem for everyone in the entire country to sing. So the Super Earth Anthem and the Automaton Boss Combat Music, definitely a more heightened version of anthems, a heightened fantasy sci-fi anthems or anthemic songs that have more dramatic cinematic elements that are sometimes a little bit too complex to become a real world anthem and that's okay this is not real world at least not yet <laughs> and yes i think that is i think that is the music that we're listening to for today. Let me just check. Mission success and debriefing music. Oh, yeah, we have maybe two more. Music, mission success and debriefing music and Hell Divers 2 and credits roll and log in screen. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll check that out now. Whew. Phenomenal scores, Wilbert. Have the cup of tea as my alarm and ringtone. You and Hans Zimmer on a playlist by yourself. Star King. Scar King. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. And yes, I agree. Wilbert did an amazing job. Amazing, amazing job. Let's see. Did I miss anything else in chat? Chat, 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 chat. All right. <clears throat> also, did I see a new Baroque in chat? My friend, new Baroque in chat?
Automaton March. Is it that automaton fight it fight music? Automaton marching cadence. These is this official or is that fan made as well? Ah. So, Automaton Marching Cadence is official? It's official. All right, got it. Because it's a different thumbnail photo, so. Okay, let's check this out then. Automaton Marching Cadence, 34 second jingle. Okay, I, I'm i confused if that was official or not, but I will figure it out after, after stream. But from what I heard so far, from what I heard so far, that is very much like a factory, like a factory music. You know that the factory line when they're building the parts of each part of the robot or something, that tempo kind of fits a conveyor belt vibe and the vocals definitely <laughs> pretty much a tribute to the Daleks exterminate <laughs> but it also definitely fits a march a robotic march full automaton Army marching cadence. I'm guessing this is still kind of a similar vibe. Let's see. Josh, focus. This is Hell Divers 2. There is a proper suggestion form in the video description. Definitely similar with more background noise and breaking glass sound effects. All right, let's go check out. This one. Hell Divers. What is it? Mission success and debriefing music. One second, chat. Skip all illuminate because that's a leak. I will wait until that is officially released.
because it's obvious just by the view count of this stream and by the view count of last week's VOD that you're all digging the Helldivers video. So we can, we can, we're going to make a lot of it. Thank you so much for dropping by, Will Roget. Congratulations on the amazing achievement. Thank you for saying hi. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. And I hope to see you again in MAGFest or Game SoundCon or whichever convention that comes up next. Raising of the Flag Super Earth Anthem. Uh, buffering in 2024? We listened to an extraction theme last time. <laughs> Raising the flag of Super Earth Anthem definitely sounds like 1950s army propaganda music. It even has that transition radio quality, a little bit of a... What is that? more nasal sound quality, more tinny sound quality, like it's playing from a small walkie-talkie or transistor radio. I don't listen to covers, Scar King. Sorry. But thank you for the super chat. I mean, I don't listen to covers for content. I listen to covers in my own time. I make my own covers, but I only feature official tracks. No covers. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it feels like a transistor radio playing it. And I can even imagine it being used in actual army ads with that kind of 1950s narration. Are you ready to... <laughs> something, something, that kind of voice. You, you know that. Um, are you ready to... What was that? Are you... May well, th again, again, again. Are you ready to make Super Earth proud? Are you ready to kill some giant bug aliens? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I already listened to that, Stenu, last week. All right. I think this will be the last for today. Mission success and debriefing. And I think two... Our long streams of Helldivers 2 music will be enough. If I missed any, uh, if I miss any other official music that was not featured in last stream or today, I will just film myself separately and put that in the final video. So there's a lot of songs. So I can already see that this will be at least four separate ep episodes four separate episodes at least if i feature three to four songs per episode four separate episodes 
And also, hello to Hoxix Phoenix. Our Triforce of Mods are now here. Hoxix Phoenix, Parnok, and Taladar, thank you so much. Please, everyone say hi to these three. These are my personal friends. I trust them with my life. I trust them with my chat. And these are the kind of friends that I trust when you go on a drinking party and you drink too much and you have a friend or three friends that you trust to bring you home if you're knocked out. Yeah, these three mods are the kind of people that I trust with that. All right. Mission success and debriefing music. This will be the last music for today. Was that like the THX sound? <laughs> so emotional and hopeful. Motif. Okay, I can imagine that this is like the part of the mission where the hell divers are exchanging pleasantries, making jokes, cracking humor, cracking jokes as if they were not headed to their, as if they were not headed to certain death. They are in total denial of the danger they're about to face. That's why they're making fun of the moment, just to, make, just to make light of things. But they know as soon as that ship door opens, all hell breaks loose. Okay, this part feels a bit more final. Mission success, indeed. That transition from epic to chill, so good. Good work, soldier. Yes. Mission success and debriefing music. Yeah, definitely demonstrates the compositional range that the composition team, the music team has. They can go full on terrifying and horrifying 
epic battle music. But then, once everything is done, for the day at least, you get this relaxing, hopeful music. And to be honest, the same feeling I got from when listening to this music right now is the same feeling I always get when you enter the safe room in Resident Evil games, especially Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 2. Different instrumentation, of course, but same feeling of, wow, this is so soothing. This is so relaxing. Mr. X cannot enter this room. Or so you think. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful soundtrack. Thank you so much, everyone, for suggesting. Thank you so much, everyone, for suggesting for me to check out this wonderful soundtrack. I really love the emphasis on electronic, synthetic rhythms and a full brass choir, brass orchestra with some support from strings. This is definitely a brass masterpiece. And the last time I heard a ton of brass instruments featured on a soundtrack, at least me personally, was a Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. The only Pokemon that I played from start to finish. A braster piece, yes. That is a perfect analogy. And, and what I would say is the brasses themselves, the, the presence of the braster, braster piece, the presence of the brass instruments, the brass instruments themselves, the brass choir, they are a character in itself. Every time, they're at, every time they enter, every time they play a harmonic, pleasant-sounding chord, it's like an old friend saying hi. So, so yeah, this is definitely... I can definitely appreciate the focused choice that the musicians that the musicians did, a focused choice to, to use a lot of brass instruments topped off with space sounding synthesizer sounds. It is beautiful, it is unique, it is totally what makes the Helldivers 2 soundtrack stand out from the rest. Yes, they could have featured more string instruments and balance it out to be more of a traditional orchestra, you know, because a traditional orchestra balances more strings and brass instead of one or the other. But the fact that they made a deliberate choice to make it all about the brasses, the most boisterous section of the orchestra, very fitting for an over-the-top, heightened military soldiers versus aliens experience. So that was like the perfect instrumental choice. Perfect genius. I love it. And recording has been stopped. So now we can chat for a little bit. Thank you so much. Yes. By the way, chat, there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's a big, big channel change coming soon, a big rebrand. I will be announcing stuff when it's ready. But suffice to say, things are going to get bigger. Things are going to get, uh, things are going to expand. Lots more to get excited about. And if you want to suggest songs for me to react or songs for, for me to cover, we, I have a content suggestion form, Google form, in my video description. It's also in all of my videos. Uh, Grimstruck says, please check out the first game's music. So far, I've only gotten like three people to suggest to check out the first game. Not that many. 
I listen to the loudest voices. I think if they went to a purely classical approach, it would lose a lot of the triumphant feel it has. The brass makes it so powerful and so hell diverse. Mista, I agree. I agree. Definitely agree with that. I have, Luke. All those, most of, <laughs> most of them were mobile games that were already delisted because the company went broke or something like that. But I did, uh, the most recent big project I did was I... I wrote music, I played music for Apex Legends. So if there's one of their Outlands shorts where there's a new character, a Filipino character, I played music for that. So go check it out in the Apex Legends channel. Yeah, you heard that right, chat. Apex Legends, shooters, Helldivers 2 shooters. Very fitting for this discussion. Uh... Only 6,000 people. Yeah, yeah. Again, I make my content not as a passion project. It is for both a balance of income and passion. I'm very passionate about video game music. I'm very passionate about music. And I love discovering new music. But it cannot all just be about what I like or what 10 people like. There has to be a balance of what I think many people like that I would also like. So it has to be a balance. So if somebody suggests me to listen to a soundtrack, and then I look at the playlist of that soundtrack on YouTube, and I see that each song barely passes 10,000 views, I might not do that. But if, for example, I check out a soundtrack and each song has a million views, like Terraria Calamity, oh my God, yeah. There, there definitely is a solid community that follows that music, especially, okay, I'm gonna let out, let, let out one factor that I make in deciding which video videos to feature. The older the, the older the game, but the stronger the community for the soundtrack, the better. You know why? Because it means the music stood the test of time. Radatas, thank you so much for being a member and Stringy Silver, woohoo That is my friend Radatas. Yeah. And sometimes it's a little bit of a gamble to focus on brand new releases because, you know, brand new releases, especially new franchises like Stellar Blade, for example, it doesn't have an established audience yet. And, you know, a new game, especially if only the demo is available, so, sorry, you're not sure if it's going to be a hit or not. But for example, Terraya Calamity was the mod some, somewhere 2008? Something like that. It's old. It's an old 10 year old, 10 on, uh, it's almost 10 years old. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I don't know the exact date, but it's a game that's been around for a while, but people still listen to its music now. And that is why I made 15 videos about Terraya Calamity. <laughs> because of being evergreen, being standing the test of time. Nintendo music, Legend of Zelda music, Undertale music, those are the kinds of music that I like to focus on. Right now, I'm focusing on League of Legends music because Damn, the champion themes have millions of views each. People still play League of Legends. I still play League of Legends with my daughter. It's already proven that it can stand the test of time even with just the music alone. So, you see, that is the balance that I always seek out when I decide which of the music to focus content on. Of course, 
I wouldn't have any idea unless you suggest it. So you suggest it, 10 of you suggest it, 100 of you suggest it. Oh, 100 people are suggesting that I check out Ultra Kill. What is going on here? Okay, then I check out Ultra Kill's soundtrack on the playlist. Millions of views each. So there you go. I play numbers. Does I am obsessed with statistics and all of that. So it's a balance. It's not all about the numbers, but I don't ignore the numbers as well. It's not all about the views, but the views are not unimportant. It's not either or. It's all of it combined. And that is pretty much my principle for deciding what content to feature. And the biggest reason I don't feature cover songs, number one, it's not official. There's something more authentic when it's officially canon. It's part of the main franchise. And number two, cover artists on YouTube are also fellow content creators. They are my equals. So if I react to their content, make a content, if I react to their cover, make videos out of it, I'm stealing views from them because their livelihood most likely also depends on getting YouTube views. It's not the same for large game dev corporations who have no stake in the YouTube game. For example, Valve doesn't care about making YouTube videos. They're a huge corporation whose money comes from Steam and their own games. YouTube is the least of their concern. So if you, if you feature videos from these game devs, make content out of their music, most of the time they would even love it. You know, they like when fans make content out of their content. It's only kind of Nintendo who is kind of adamant about not wanting that much. But most developers, they want it. They encourage it, especially MiHoYo. That is why I'm preparing a, lot, a ton of Genshin Impact content because MiHoYo games, they want you to make content out of their content. Delta, that is, that is debatable. There are some facts that prove it yes. There are some facts that prove it otherwise. I just don't want to get involved with that. Just no. Plus the game devs get the bonus of possible new players. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a m minimal bonus. But what I'm saying is these large corporations like Capcom, Konami, especially MiHoYo Games, Blizzard, they don't really, they're not YouTubers. They're not YouTube content creators. They don't care if you compete with their music. That's not their game. That's not their main thing. That's not their main business. <laughs> And they like it when fans make content out of their assets. But on the other hand, a fellow YouTube creator whose work and career also depends on them getting videos, well, getting views, and potentially me taking away some of their views, or, or maybe it's not, I, I, I just don't want I don't want any part of that. I'll just keep to myself and that's it. <laughs> and and b these corporations, they will benefit if they encourage fans to make content. You know why? Because they don't want a David and Goliath situation. It's bad publicity for large corporations to be going after smaller creators. And me, even though I have nearly 250,000 subscribers, 
that is nothing. That is like a blip. I am a tiny fish compared to the huge corporation that is Nintendo or Konami and all of that. So, you know, there's really <laughs> a huge distance between corporations and solo creators. And, you know, that's where I am. And that is where I stand when it comes to this. But anyway, I'm hungry, chat, and I'm way overdue for my daily night walk. Thank you so much to our wonderful mods, Hawk6 Phoenix, Parnock, and Talidar. And yes, Talidar, I, I agree with that. Magfest shield. <laughs> but I enjoyed the discussion, everyone. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. I will decide yet what will be streamed. But in the meantime, if if you like to listen to my own violin covers, it's all on Spotify. If you enjoy reaction content or musical analysis like this, I have a ton already in my YouTube channel. This video will be left up. I will keep this VOD up. And yeah, but again, these streams like the Portal 1, the Stellar Blade, Helldivers, Pizza Tower noise update, it will all be edited as proper videos later on. I will be adding the violin improv as well. But usually I did these reaction streams on, on Twitch. And one time I decided, oh, let's try it on YouTube. And it was successful. And thank you. Thank you so much for, for uh, joining. Anyway, have the, uh, what is it? What was I going to say? Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you when I see you. Bye!